Hey, God bless all of you that are watching the rebroadcast of this. My name is Charlie Champ. I'm the founder of Destiny Encounters International. Along with my wife, Bryn Champ, you can find out more about us at www.destinyencounters.com. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about some things that the Lord has been burning in my heart and um, some things that I believe that uh, are going to set you on fire for what the Lord is really heralding from heaven right now. So I'm going to give a little bit of time for people to join the broadcast and um, for everybody to share. So I ask you that as you're coming in, please, please share the broadcast. And uh, at the end of this, I am going to pray. So if you are um, in need of a miracle or you need a touch from the presence of God, we are going to pray for you today. I want to do the broadcast like this so that I can actually read some comments. I see that some of our friends are here from Canada. I see California, some from Africa. Let me know where you're tuned in from as uh, people are coming uh, onto the broadcast. We're going to give it a little bit of time, but I'm telling you my heart is burning for the nations. My heart is burning for revival. This is an hour where God is raising up burning ones, those that are on fire for him, that are going to be uh, carrying the torch of the gospel of Jesus Christ into the nations. And um, this is the finest hour for the church. I see Alex on here. Bless you, Alex. Jen, bless you. I see Maxine from Cape Town. Bless you. Jenny from England. Bless you. Let me know where you guys are tuned in from. Hey, Deborah from Charlotte. I was just down in Charlotte yesterday. I was filming um, a program with uh, Jeff Jansen at the ISN Network. Really went um, fantastic. It was awesome meetings. We actually talked about the billion soul harvest, and that's one of the things I want to discuss with you today. So guys, listen, as you're joining, please share the broadcast share the broadcast and uh, let all your friends know that uh, we are on today because I want to get you excited about uh, what God is releasing in America and across the world right now. I see Aaron Packard on here, pastor from Kansas. Bless you, my friend. Um, Linda, bless you. I see you on here. Um, Michelle, bless you from Washington State, praying for Washington and the Seattle area. I'll be out there in August uh, for those that are wanting to know when's the next time I will be in the Washington State area. I will be out there in um, August to minister. So anyways, bless all of you on this Friday. What a glorious day it is. Amen. And um, this word has been burning in my heart. And some of the things that I really wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, concerning the billion soul harvest and what the Lord is uh, currently doing. Hey, Katie, bless you. Katie Gibson, bless you. And Jeremiah, um, David Yancey is on here. Bless you, my friend. So guys, if you'll share the broadcast that would be fantastic. I, I wanted to do it this way so I could read the comments today. And um, I'm going to be praying for people. So if you need a fresh touch from the Spirit of God, we are going to be praying. Uh, I see some people from uh, Oklahoma, South Africa. I see uh, Esther from Kenya. Bless you, Esther. Okay. Joanne's asking for prayer. Yes, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Pam Erickson just came on. Bless you. Um, I'll just wait a few more minutes here as more people are coming in. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for sharing. Somebody from uh, Maria from Miami, Florida. Bless you. And Vicky, yes, breathe the breath of God. Alex, Chicago, can't wait for September. We're praying from, from Canada, yes, bless you. 
Esther, thank you for sharing. It's awesome because we actually see um, people that share the broadcast because it says like, sh you know, that you shared at the, um, at the top of your name. And guys, please um, think about sharing this in some of those groups that you're a part of. Hey, MJ from London, UK, bless you. Some of those groups that you're a part of here on Facebook, this broadcast would be fantastic to put in there because we want to get the word out. We want to get the word out to people of what we are going to be doing in September. And um, we believe that it's going to be a powerful time in the presence of God. Thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing. Uh, Desiree, thank you from Washington, Seattle, Washington. Bless you. Colorado Springs, bless you. New Jersey, bless you. Donna, thank you for sharing. Okay, guys, well, I'm telling you right now, this is the time. This is the hour for the church to arise. This is the hour for burning ones to come forth. And the Lord began to just speak to me several days ago uh, concerning um, a prophetic word that I want to release to you about the harvest and this new company that's arising and coming forth in this hour that is going to carry... Um, then and really is going to spearhead uh, the coming move of the Holy Ghost. And we can't just be those that idly sit by and wait for some day in the, and, and, you know, in the by and by where we're going to say, okay, now is the time. This is the perfect hour for revival or outpouring or the presence of God to happen. I'm telling you, it's in the darkest hour that God calls this church to arise. He says, arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And this is the hour that would seemingly be the darkest hour that we have ever faced. But I'm telling you that God has chosen you and I. He has placed us in this generation right now as carriers of his glory, those that would carry and release his presence in all the earth. In, in all the years that you have been serving God and learning the things of the Spirit, this is the finest hour where God will raise you up to be a voice crying in the wilderness and preparing the way, making every crooked place straight. And the Bible says that in these last days that the Lord would release the spirit of Elijah. And I believe that God is releasing an Elijah spirit in the earth, just like he released it upon John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was one that was burning in the wilderness, that was literally crying in the wilderness, saying, prepare the way of the Lord and turning a nation back to God through repentance, prayer, and restoration. And I'm telling you, in preparing the way for Christ to be revealed. And this is the hour where God is once again looking for those that are burning ones, those that are coming out of the wilderness, that have not been chosen, hand-selected by um, the, the you know, religious, uh, prestigious groups, but the burning ones. And I remember the Lord spoke to me several years ago when Billy Graham, it was actually before Billy Graham went home to be with the Lord. Some of you know about this prophetic word. And the Spirit of the Lord came to me when I was in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina ministering. And, and I saw Billy Graham. He came into the meeting and I saw him leave, ascend into heaven. And I, but I saw his mantle drop. It came onto the earth. And the Lord spoke to me and said that Billy Graham will pass away. And it, and, 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 and it was like uh, the Lord said in the next several weeks, he will go to home to be with the Lord, but his mantle will drop, not on the pious preacher, not on the, the person that, um, you know, uh, was chosen by the committee and was, was hand selected. Uh, by a specialty group to, 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 to bear the gospel and bring forth the good tidings of the kingdom. He said, no, this, this mantle is going to fall on the burning ones. This mantle is going to fall on the wild ones. This mantle is going to fall on those that are uh, out of the box. And so it was right from that moment that the burning desire to see souls saved uh, 
just captured me in a new way. And the Lord began to speak to me and he said, son, I've called you to be a prophet to the nations, but if you're not winning souls for me, you're, prof you're not profiting my kingdom. And it was in that moment that the Lord began to give me a mandate for winning souls. And actually the Lord began to speak to me about the billion soul mandate, that this was the hour in which had been reserved and preserved uh, to see the great influx of the harvest of souls like we have never seen before in any other generation. And the word that Bob Jones had given many, many years ago about the billion soul harvest was it was being activated in this hour. And it was for all of those that would step in, that would make a decision to say, I'm not going to wait for the by and by, I'm going to jump in right now. And so in 2017, we started going after souls immediately. And up to date right now, we have seen 650,000 people born again. And we are not slowing down. We're not stopping. We're not even... Uh, um, you know, uh, shifting it to a lower gear to bring it down a little bit. No, we're full steam ahead and we're going forth into everything that God has spoken to us. And this last year, when we began to pray, Brent and myself, we began to ask God, what would you have us do, Lord? Where, what nations would you have us to go to? And suddenly the spirit of God spoke so clearly in like a thundering voice, the Spirit of God came and said, turn your eyes towards the United States, for it is the United States that so desperately needs a move of God in this hour. And the things that you've sown overseas, all of the souls that you've won in the nations and all of the finances that you've put into the nations was simply seeds for what you're going to see in America in this hour. And I thought to myself, I said, Lord, there is no way that we can see the types of harvest that we're seeing overseas that when see those in the United States. And the Lord said, look not at days of small beginnings. For what is about to come will be such a flood of harvest that there will not be room enough to receive all the souls that are going to come in. And the Lord spoke to me and said, said don't look for the, the fine, uh, polished preachers to come and help you in the harvest. Look for the wild, burning ones that are, that are the nameless, faceless generation the David's army, the, the Gideon's army that will come out and burn with you and take the streets for the kingdom of God that will say, I'm not waiting, I'm going after souls. I'm going after the harvest. I'm going after the kingdom of God, and it's America's time. America shall be saved. And so I immediately started thinking, well, where should we go? What should we do? What crusade, uh, you know, what, what, what stadium should we get in America? And the Lord spoke to me again and said, do not go to a stadium. I said, Lord, you don't want us to go to a stadium? He said, he said, son, I want you to go to where souls are at. I said, well, Lord, they'll come to the stadium. He said, they will not come to the stadium. I want you to go to the inner city of America. I want you to take the banner of the love of Jesus Christ and the gospel, the gospel that my son shed his blood for. And I want you to take that gospel into the highways and the byways, into the inner city of America where there are souls that desperately need to hear the gospel. And so uh, we began to pray into it and, and we came up with this. Uh, the Lord spoke to us and said, go to the city of Chicago. So I'm just giving you a little bit of backdrop of some of the things uh, that the that the Lord has been that that the Lord has given to us, and I believe that just as accurate as the prophetic words that many of you have watched and seen and shared on social media, uh, that 
has been released through this ministry. Just as accurately as the Lord has spoken to me about those things, the Lord has accurately spoken to me about the city and the location of this crusade. That this is the exact place that God wanted us to go to. The city of Chicago, the inner city of Chicago, where last week alone was the bloodiest weekend in all of the history of Chicago. I believe there was 85 people that were murdered last weekend in the city of Chicago. And let me tell you something. I'm going to just I'm, I'm going to be raw. I'm going to be real. I'm going to just release this on you because I know that there are some people that are just done with, with anything that has nothing to do with the power of the gospel. Hey, bless you, Daniel. Uh, this, is the, this is where the rubber meets the road. And the fact of the matter is, is that for years we've heard that America has already heard the gospel and America doesn't need the gospel and everybody's already heard and we need to go overseas and that's where, uh, you know, that's where the harvest is at. And America is 90, 98% of people have heard the gospel in America. My friend, it's a lie. Let's, let's just destroy the lies and the illusions right now while our inner cities burn to the ground and people don't have a clue if who Jesus Christ is. We have been duped into believing that nobody needs to hear the gospel anymore because we have been so confined to our uh, religious cultures and we've been so boxed in by in our little um, in our little world that we have failed to realize that the that the cities of America need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ like never before. And the only way that we're going to see the harvest of souls that we need to see is those that will rise up right now and will carry the banner of Jesus into the city streets. Hey, Katie, thank you for sharing this broadcast. I really appreciate everybody that shares this because we want to get the word out. We want to see as many people that will come with us to the city of Chicago. This is not going to be a fanfare. This isn't going to be, uh, uh, you know, the the finest of the finest uh, worship teams and, and a prayer summit. This is not what that's what this is going to be. This is going to be a full-fledged, burning, fiery crusade campaign from Sunday the 6th through the 13th, that next, that, that following Sunday of every single day going on the streets, winning souls and working miracles. And we've picked out a strategic area within the city of Chicago, a, a um, inner city of 72 blocks. And we are going to bombard those 72 blocks with the gospel. In fact, we're looking to pass out at least 40,000 flyers across that area and bombard it with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this last week, as I, my heart was just burning on fire, I mean, I couldn't even sleep the other night as I, I was just thinking about how desperately this gospel needs to get out and how God needs to set this cities on fire for the presence of of the Lord. And while that spirit of anarchy is trying to reign, the anointing needs to come in with an answer. And the kingdom of God needs to come in with an answer. And there needs to be the, those burning, fiery ones that are like the militant army uh, 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 of David, the wild ones that were in the caves, the wild ones like Gideon's army, the wild ones that, 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 that were like Jesus's disciples that left it all and said, I'm going to follow after you. And Jesus said, come and I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say, I'm going to come and I'm going to make you a pastor. I come, I want to make you a prophet. I'm going to make you an apostle. I'm going to, I'm going to come and I'm going to, I'm going to raise you up to build a network. No, that's not what he said. That's not what Jesus said. He said, come and I will make you fishers of men. And that is the mandate and the message, not just for Ephesians 4 ministry gifts, but that is the mandate for all believers. 
every believer. He didn't say, uh, you and you go into the nations and preach the gospel. No, he commanded all to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, you should share this right now. You should share this broadcast. And some of you should click on that link and sign up. Some of you should sign up right now to be a part of what we're doing. I would like to see, what could you imagine? I, I'll take 300, but could you imagine a thousand fire-breathing believers hitting the streets from Sunday, the September the 6th, to Sunday, the 13th, in the inner city, 20, uh, 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 72 blocks, hitting it, every street corner, every part of the, of the place, uh, bombarding, bombarding neighborhoods with the presence of God, bombarding uh, businesses with the presence of God, bombarding the healing, uh, uh, the sick, the wounded, the, those that desperately need the gospel. Thank you so much, Andrew, for sharing. Thank you, Maria, for sharing. Uh, Daniel, the dates are September the 6th through September the 13th. It is called Chicago Freedom Fest. The links are in the description box. You want to sign up and become a volunteer. And also, uh, if you feel like sewing into the crusade, I would ask you to do that as well. We're currently raising finances for that. Now, People are saying, so what are some of the things that we're going to be doing? And I'm going to get into this word, but I want to fire you up today to get you uh, involved. Because the, the reality of the fact is this, especially those that are you know, in America. And I know there's people that are going to be making their way to come over from overseas. We have people that are trying to come in from, from different parts of the world. Korea and, and England and Asia, all parts of different Asia and um, uh, places, uh, you know, Pakistan, India, all uh, that South America. People are contacting and wanting to come in. But the fact of the matter is this, is that what I've noticed is it's very easy for Americans to go overseas and win souls. They want to go on a mission trip. They want to go and, you know, they want to reach the loss in the third world country. And we do that. We take, we've taken teams overseas for years and ministered in open fields in crusades. And what I realized is the greatest harvest field is right here in America right here in the United States. And we can't, we can't somehow um, uh, romanticize. This is one of the things that Bryn was, we were chatting about yesterday. She says, she was saying, you know, Charlie, uh, people romanticize about being a missionary overseas, but they forget that the inner cities of America desperately need the gospel. That the inner city of America is a harvest field that is ripe for the harvest. And, it, and, and, and I couldn't agree with her more because, because we can readily see what's happening right now. Right now. And I want to be very blunt in saying that the government can't fix this. The government cannot fix a heart condition. Only Jesus Christ can change someone's heart. And, and I'll even be, and, and I'll put the blame on myself. And I'll say this. I won't point my finger at anyone. I'll say this. It's probably our, my fault that I didn't start earlier going into the inner cities of America. Because one of the reasons that, that the inner cities are in the condition that they're in is not because of the government. It's because of the church. Because the church has failed to go in and make it a priority to win the lost in these places. Now, you may or may not like what I'm saying right now. But the fact of the matter is this, is that the cities burn because they have not been set ablaze with the power of the Holy Ghost. And there was a generation before us, R.W. Shambach, A.A. Allen, these men and women of God, uh, Amy Simple McPherson, that went into the inner cities of the United States and began to preach the gospel. They began to go after souls, especially R.W. Shambach, especially A.A. Allen. 
these men, and, and there are other ones, you know, I, I, I thank God for uh, the Shuttlesworth uh, family, you know, Ted Shuttlesworth, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Teddy's, uh, his younger, his younger, his son. Uh, I thank God for them because they're going into the inner cities. I thank God for Jonathan Shuttlesworth. I thank God that they've, they're, they've been going in and doing inner city crusades. But, but, but we don't need just one or two. We need an entire army that will say, you know what? Here I am, God. Choose me. I'm going after it. I'm going to be a burning one in the desert. I'm going to be a burning one. I'm going to be a burning one. I'm going to go after souls. And so some people have been saying, well, what are some of the things that you're going to be doing? Well, one of the things that we have decided to do and we're, we're going for it. I mean, we're going for it, going for it. We're not only going to go and preach the gospel. We already have the field. We already have, we've been, we had the field. We've been working on this since last November. When we, we've been, you know, Darcy, myself, Bryn, we've been, you know, uh, we've been going at Brenda, his wife, Darcy's wife. We've been strategizing along with our team right there in Chicago, uh, you know, and, and we've been, we've been steadily getting ready for what we're going to be doing. And one of the things we're, we've decided, and we're going to do this, is not only going to be preaching the gospel, you know, big campaign, stage, lighting, everything. I mean, the finest of the finest is what, the way we're going to do it. But we are also going to feed 500 families for an entire week. We're looking into it right now. And we're going to be feeding 500 inner city families for an entire week. Well, week's worth of groceries for an inner city family. So 500 families we're going to be uh, reaching out to and giving a week's worth of groceries. And so one of the things that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be packing up all the food, putting those, those, those week's worth of groceries together because we wanna make sure that we're not just coming in with a message. We wanna make sure that we're coming also with a humanitarian relief. We want to be able to say that not only did we preach the gospel to you, but we met a physical need that you had. And, 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 and I feel that this is one of the best ways that we can reach out to the local community is say, come, we're, gonna, we, 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 we're going to feed your family for an entire week. We're going to give you groceries for an entire week. And we're going to make sure that you are blessed by, by um, coming to the crusade. The other thing we're looking at doing is we're looking at doing giveaways. And you say, Brother Charlie, what do you mean by giveaways? Well, we're looking to give away televisions, uh, all kinds of electronics. We're also going to be looking at uh, giving gift cards away and paying people's bills. So uh, they're, whether they're behind on their... Um, on their water bill or their electrical bill or some, one of their bills or car payments, something, we're going to say, you know what? We're going to pay for that. We're going to pay for that. Because what we want to do is we want to draw the largest crowds that we can. We want to draw the largest crowds that we can. Hey, Thomas, bless you from, middle, from the Middle East. Maybe you can come over and be a part of what we're doing. Physically and spiritually fed. That's right. That's right. Praise God. Um, thank you for sharing, Dawn. Yeah, bless you, Aaron. Thank you. Aaron Packard's going to be there with us. And we're looking for some, for this is just some miracle workers that are going to sign up, that are going to participate in what we're doing. Now, the Lord gave me a scripture. The Lord gave me a scripture out of Ezekiel chapter uh, 30 and verse 8 and 9. I want to read that for you. It says, Behold, I have made your face strong, hard against their faces, your forehead strong and hard against their foreheads. Bless you, Maddie. Good to see uh, my mother from uh, England on here. Um, 
verse 9 says, like flint, or, listen to this. This, is, this, this struck me. It gave me a picture of what God is releasing in this hour right now. He said, like flint, or a diamond point have I made your forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their look, for they are a rebellious house. The Lord spoke to me through this scripture, and he said, son, he said, this is what I'm doing in this hour. I am releasing a new warring instrument into the earth. And I said, I said, Lord, you're releasing a new warring instrument. He said, yes, I am going to make these people, these wild burning ones, I'm going to make their face like the tip of a diamond. And they are going to spearhead a fresh move of God in America. They are going to be the tip of the spear. They are going to be those that carry forth the finest gospel into the nation of America. And he said, just as a diamond literally can shatter glass. I am going to use these ones that are the tip of the spear to shatter the illusion, to shatter the image, the false image, the false narrative that the enemy has tried to create in America. And he said, just as a diamond can cut through glass, so too will I make these ones a burning fire. I mean, forged from the fire, forged from the pressure, just as coal is put under pressure. And, and as it's under that pressure, the diamond comes forth. The Lord said, I am going to cause these ones to spearhead a fresh move of God in the earth because this is the hour where every illusion is going to be shattered and the power of God is going to be present to heal, to deliver, and set free. And he said, I'm making these ones like diamonds. They are going to be the tip of the spear. Guys, we are, we are plowing new territory. We are in unprecedented times. We are in the hour where God is anointing his finest jewels of his kingdom, the most precious ones, and sending them forth to spearhead his presence, his power, his anointing in the United States. He has been preparing you for so long under pressure. Some of you felt like just in this last season, such pressure upon you. And I'm telling you that this is the hour where all of that pressure is going to produce this new instrument, this new warring instrument to go forth and, and, and drive the spear into the heart 
of the enemy. But we got to be willing to step outside of our box. We got to be willing to step outside where we've been in the past, what we feel comfortable with, where we feel like, you know, it's easy, guys, to prophesy to your drunk friend, your Holy Ghost drunk uh, friend at a conference. That's easy. That's easy. It's easy to sit back and take another prophetic class. It's easy. But where the rubber meets the road is when you take what you've been given outside the four walls of the church and you say, Charlie, you say, you say I, I'm going to step out and I'm going to use what I've been given. That's when you find out what you really have. That's when you find out if what you have is authentic and real. Is that moment that you step outside of the church culture and you bring it into a place where the last thing that is on their mind is the Lord. And suddenly you find out exactly what you are carrying. And if it is powerful enough to affect this generation. And I believe that all uh, 211 of you that are on here right now are God's finest instruments. You are God's finest ones to run with the fire and the power of the Lord. Now, look at Isaiah Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Because I'm giving you a prophetic a picture today of what's coming forth. My heart is so set on revival and outpouring, I can't see anything else. In fact, I'm praying. I mean, I, 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 I'm looking to reschedule my whole entire itinerary for the remainder of the year. I'm actually looking for even, even churches that will say, don't just come for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but come for a whole week and do revival. We, uh, 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 my church wants a move of God. We don't want to just do the same old, same old. I believe we're on the cusp of revival. We got to go after souls and we got to go after the move of the spirit. We got to go after miracles, signs, wonders. We got to go after what God has preserved for us. You know, uh, everybody, uh, there's some people that are speaking about the billion soul harvest and about Bob Jones's word. But Bob Jones also spoke of the dread champions. And he said that there was a company that was coming forth that God would open up his entire war uh, treasury. And that nothing would be denied to them. Nothing that they asked for would be held back. That the dread champions would literally be those that would take all of the, the resources from heaven and and implement them on the earth. That's what, I, that's what I'm looking to do. I'm, I'm looking to e for even angels. The Bible says angels fear to tread to the, at the places that we go. I'm looking to freak angels out in this hour at the places that we go. 
The Bible says that we should love not our lives even unto death. What are we afraid of? The Bible says that we have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives on the inside of me. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What are we afraid of? Man, what are we afraid of? That's right. It's like fire shut up in my bones. I feel it today. Literally, I was, I was shaking on, on Wednesday night. I, I could not sleep. I could not sleep. I was just burning, praying in tongues. And I said, Lord, I said, I said, I, I said, I don't know how I can reach more people to mobilize an army to hit the inner city of Chicago with me. I said, I, I was, I was literally, I was just, It's been like this for, for me for all this all this whole week. I mean, intercession will just hit me. I'll just be sitting in a chair and so I just start weeping uncontrollably. And I'm like, and, and, and it's not like a worked up intercession. It's like weeping for this nation and saying, God, if I could get a thousand believers to join me in the city of Chicago, we could make such an impact that it would even impact the body of Christ to recognize that why do you look back at these giants? Why do you look at these giants and think that they are, are so difficult? They fall like every other man. They fall just like the rest of them. You don't even need a, sto a sword. You just need a stone. And I'm telling you, the Lord is looking for those stones, those burning stones, those diamonds, those ones that are carrying the tip of the spear. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I hope I'm getting over to you guys this today. September the 6th through the 13th. It's like last night. That's right, Kim. That's like last night when I was, I was uh, doing the partners, um, our partner, our partner page, uh, the, our group, our Zoom chat that we do every Thursday. I said to, I said to our partners, I said, I said, Jesus was never led to pray for anybody. And know that may be that may also shock some of you, but the Bible plainly says that the only time that Jesus was ever led was when he was led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness and be tempted of the devil. The Bible does not say that the Lord was was uh, was led by the Spirit to pray for people. The Bi what the Bible says is that the Lord was moved with compassion and he prayed. You don't have to be led by the Spirit to pray for people, but you do have to have compassion for the lost. And when you get compassion for the lost, then you will go to whatever, whatever, place and by whatever means necessary to preach, to proclaim, to release the miracle power of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, people are saying, well, Brother Charlie, is Chicago the last one you're doing? No, it's the first one I'm doing because I'm going to do another one in 2021 and 2022 and 2023. And I'm this whole decade, this whole decade, I said, God, give me America. 
give me the, and if nobody wants to go to the inner cities of America, no, no evangelist, no, no minister wants to go to the inner cities. Lord, let me have that mantle. I want to go. And Lord, give, give us an army that will go in with us, that will prophesy, that will lay hands on the sick, that will win souls, that will work miracles. And the Lord gave me that scripture and he said, their faces will be like diamonds and these will be the tip, this will be the tip of the spear that will shatter the illusion of the enemy. And many, many will see that these demonic entities that parade themselves in the inner cities of our nation, they will see them fall just like any other man. And there will be those that will bow their knee because every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The the Lord Jesus is going to come in the inner city and people are going to bow their knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, Holy Ghost. Fire some people up on this broadcast right now. Shoo. That's right. That's right. The Bible says that there was reserved in Israel 7,000 that did not bow their knee to Baal, nor kiss his image. Could you imagine 7,000 people hitting 72 blocks in the inner city of Chicago? What that would look like? What that would look like. 7,000 believers hitting 72 blocks, praying, prophesying, releasing miracles. People bowing their knee, drug dealers being saved, prostitutes being born again, crackheads being saved and delivered from drug addiction, heroin addicts. You know that heroin is killing literally thousands upon thousands of Americans are dying from drug addiction and heroin alone. You're not going to hear that on the news. They're not even talking about it. The inner cities are being rocked and shaken by heroin and fentanyl overdoses, people literally dying every single week. My friend, the answer is Jesus Christ. The answer is Jesus. He is the answer. But the Lord is saying, who's going to spearhead this? Who is going to, like an army, like an army, set in perfect rank, going to take on on Satan's satanic war machine? Come on, who's fired up? Somebody talk to me right now. That's why I did the broadcast this way instead of doing it a different way because I want to see your comments today. I want to see who's coming with me. Who's coming in? That's right, mental illness needs to go. Come on, Jesus. I'm telling you, some of our inner cities, some of the places, I could take you into Chicago right now and show you some places that look like third world, uh, it's like third world conditions. There are, there are, right, there are right now, I'm, I mean, guys, let's just be honest here. There are, play, there, are, there are kids that are going to go to sleep tonight in America without any food. They're going to literally go to bed hungry. Esther's coming. We're not even talking about this. We're, you're not even going to hear this on the news. 
The answer is Jesus. Look at that. Todd said that heroin stole his life for 12 years. Todd, you should come. You should come. And you know what? You should, you should, you should be right there on the streets with us. Right there on the streets with us. Now, Isaiah 49, verse 2 says, He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. He has made our mouths like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hid me and made me a polished arrow. In the quiver has he kept me close and concealed me. You have been kept close. You have been sealed and you have been set in, the, in God's hand. God's right hand is always God's hand of power. He puts you in his hand. He hid you for this hour because this is our finest hour. Pamela, you need to come to the city of Chicago in September. Virginia, bless you. Guys, we, 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 we got to go after this. Your mouth is a sharp sword. You are going to, you are going to shut the mouth of the enemy. God has given to you the words, the words to speak, to cut at the heart of people that are hurt, that are lost, that are dying. Now we're going to be starting some training. We're going to be doing some Zoom training to get you prepared to win souls, to pray for the sick. And Jane Kim, bless you, Jane Kim. She lives in Chicago. She's a part of the team. Thank you for being on here. Please, guys, if you'll share, thank you, uh, Tamara, for sharing. If you'll share the broadcast, Thank you for sharing it. Share it in all your groups. Share it with people. Share, share, share. My, my heart is strictly focused on Chicago. Strictly focused on winning the lost. Strictly focused on feeding families. Strictly focused on blessing that community. One of the things that I, I, I've been pressing for is further to for uh, us to be able to get a nice vehicle that we could give we could do a, 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 a one of the giveaways would be a vehicle a, a car it doesn't even have to be new just a nice vehicle that we could give away to bless somebody a family that doesn't even have a car that doesn't have a transportation But anyways, we're going to be doing these Zoom chats, and uh, there will be times of equipping. That's why you need to sign up. In the link of the description box of this video is a place where you can sign up, and um, you can get in on those trainings. Because we, don't, we want to uh, give you the tools necessary so that you will be, excuse me, you will be fully prepared and equipped to win the lost. I'm going, to, we're going to get, oh, we're going to deal with um, even things that are misconceptions about winning the lost. Misconceptions about healing. Misconceptions about praying. Misconceptions and things that have just been lies that, that people, you know, they, 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 you know, in the church have told others 
that simply, I mean, things that don't even, I mean, things that don't even work. Let's just, let's just, let's just go with what works. Let's go with what works. And so we know what works. And so we're going to be training, equipping people. I know some of are, are signing up right now as they're, you know, they're, they're listening to broadcast and they clicked on that link and they're signing up right now. I'd like to see a thousand believers. I'll do with 300 because I know how, I know what it takes to actually step out and begin to do something. I know that, that, that it, takes, it takes faith to go. It takes faith to step out. It takes faith to say, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not just going to sit and warm a pew anymore or just, you know, and I love conferences. I'm, you know, I love conferences or just, you know, but I just say this, I, I'm not just going to be one that's going to go to another conference. But I'm going to be one in this hour that is going to step out and begin to use what I've been given. I'm going to I'm going to use my prophetic gifting. I'm going to use my healing gift. Man, I f- I'm going to pray for some people soon on here, but God is God has reserved you preserved you for this hour. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and share the broadcast right now, if you can. If you can, share the broadcast. Share, share, and share. Thank you, Lord. Share, share, and share. Let me read some of these comments. This is purpose. This is, I did this on purpose. I could have done this with our fine studio equipment today. I could have hooked everything up, and, but I wanted to read a lot of your comments. Bless you, Benjamin. Pam, thank you. And I, I'm calling for believers all over the world. I'm not just saying if you're living in the United States. We've opened this up for, we want hundreds and, and, and I'm believing, I, I'm believing, we're believing, Brent and I are believing, we're going to have a thousand people that are going to show up. A thousand people show up and hit the streets with us. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be the crusade. And it will be done just the same way that we do the crusades overseas the same way that we do the crusades over the sea, overseas, they will be done in the exact same manner. The preaching of the gospel, the releasing of miracle power, and this is where we'll release those that have been uh, with us for that week to go lay hands on people. I am telling you guys, we are going to see thousands of people saved. Do you hear me? Thousands. And we're going to see people, thousands of people set free and delivered. I can already see. I've been having dreams every night. I feel like I'm already in Chicago and we're three months out from this. We're three months out. And I already feel it. I'm like, man, I've been, I I mean, I can see an army just, I can see the, 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 those, those young people that are in the, in the inner city, I mean, coming to the crusade and getting touched and literally weeping as the presence of God touches them. I, I can see that drug dealer, that, 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 um, that Latin Kings gang member giving his life to Jesus and literally putting down his guns, putting down uh, his affiliation with the, with the gang and saying, you know what, I'm walking away from this lifestyle. I'm going to serve Jesus. I can see those things happening. And, I, and I've been saying to the Lord, I said, I said Lord, I, w- I need to be careful because I can't, t- I, some of the things that I've been saying to the Lord uh, just about, about ministry, I'm giving, I said, I'm giving everything to this. I don't care about anything else, but I do care about souls because the only thing that we can take with us at the end of the day is souls. You can't take your prophetic prophecy words. You can't take, you know, uh, whatever. You can't take any of that stuff, 
but you can take souls with you. You can take souls. When we get to heaven, listen, can I be honest with you? People aren't gonna care how accurate of a prophet, you know, Brother Charlie was. The Lord's not gonna be like, son, you are super accurate in the prophetic. Wow, you were all, you know, the Lord's gonna look at me, he's gonna say, what did you do with the influence that I gave to you? And how did you mobilize the church to win souls? And again, I say to you, I say this to all 204 of you that are on here. The Lord spoke to me years ago and he said this. He said, son, I called you to be a prophet to the nations, but if you're not winning souls, you're profiting not, you're, you're, you're not profiting my kingdom, anything. And that's the moment that I realized that this was the central focus of the kingdom was revival, outpouring, winning the lost, and seeing a great awakening come forth. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we'll have uh, as many of you that can join us as possible come with us. Set that September the 6th to the 13th date aside. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday of that week, we will have an open air festival, an open air festival where we will preach the gospel. The simple gospel of Jesus, we will give altar calls and we will pray for the sick. Deliverances. And so that's what we're doing. We're pressing in for the great awakening. And I believe that this is exactly, think about this. This is exactly what Finney, Wesley, Edwards, they all went into the open fields and preached the gospel. They, that, this is what happened. They went to the open fields and preached the gospel. We're starting to see some of that right now. But I'm saying, Lord, raise an army. Raise up an army. And I, we need you guys. We need you guys to get the word out. Listen, if you will do this as well, you say, well, Brother Charlie, how can I help? Well, one of the things you can help with is by spreading the word. Because there are people that you know that, that we don't know that would want to be a part of what we're doing. And so their fly, the, the flyer is on the website, the Chicago Freedom Fest. Share that flyer. Share that with your friends. Share the link of signing up. Share the video of where Brent and I are speaking about what we're doing in, in, in Chicago and what we want to do. Share those things so let's get the word out to as many people as possible. And uh, if you have questions, email the ministry, info at destinyencounters.com, and we'll get you um, all, we'll answer those questions for you. Um, but uh, we want you, we want you there in September. This is my central focus for this year. And it has been since November when we started working on this in 2019. And here we are just a few months out. And, and I'll tell you, the enemy is, I, I, I gotta be honest with you, out of all the crusades, all the things that we've done, the resistance on this particular one has been the biggest because I know that the enemy is, is upset, he's angry, and he knows that if believers start to go into the inner cities of America, he is finished. He is finished. 
And I'm telling you, I want the young, I want the old. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. You say, Brother Charlie, I'm 65 years old. And, and I don't know if I can keep the pace for that, that long of a week, you know, going out every day and winning souls. My friend, listen to me. You come and be a part and do your best. Do your best. Be a part of what we're doing. This, this is the hour that God's reserved you for. You may say, well, Brother Charlie, I'm 23. I'm burning for the, f I mean, I met, you know, young people, 18, 19, 20, tw you know, 25 years old that are just fire. They're just filled with the fire of God. They're, they're ready. They, they want a blow horn to preach the gospel on the side, on the corner. These are the kinds of people we want you guys to come. Give me, give me a, give me a thousand fire breathing evangelists, nameless, faceless, burning ones. If I had, if I had 300 fired up evangelists, what, imagine that. And I'm telling you, one of the things that's going to be awesome is when you come out as a part of the Chicago Crusade, you're going to get an impartation because I'm going to pray for every single believer that comes on that following Sunday when we're giving testimony and all the things that are happening. I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to say, this is the, we're going to do an impartation. We'll do an impartation before we start. We'll do an impartation after we start. We'll do impartation in the middle of it. I don't care. We're going to, we're going to light you on fire. Some of you, we have, I have one a particular minister that's coming. That's it's a part of what we're doing. And, and he is, uh, he's a powerful, awesome man of God, but he's coming just to learn how we're doing it because he wants to do it as well uh, in other cities. And I'm hoping that some other preachers and ministers will say, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to learn how to do this. I believe that this is going to be a catalytic event. This is going to spearhead other evangelists, other burning ones to go into their cities, to choose a town, a neighborhood, a place uh, to begin to release the gospel. There will be giant buckets of oils, yes, and we will anoint everything that moves, and maybe even twice. I would like to see pastors bring your whole church over. Awesome, Daniel. Bless you. Yes, catch the fire, Vicky. That's right. Kim, that's right. Detroit needs it. Thank you, Marina. Bless you. So, guys, all you got to do, go sign up. Sign up today. Sign up for what we're doing. Let's get an army out there. Let's get some believers that are fired up that are going to help win souls. Cheryl, we hope to see you there. Bless you. Pamela, I'm hoping that you're going to come. I'm going to look at some more comments. Praying for you and your ministry. Thank you. North America needs it. I'm telling you right now, North America needs it more than, than, I mean, we've been traveling into the nations for years. Thank you, Cole. Bless you. Thanks for sharing. And now God is saying, it's America's time. It's America's time. Thank you, Vicki.
That's what we want to do. And we have churches that are involved with us in this, in this particular area of Chicago. The, I believe we have around 10 churches that are connected with the crusade at this point that are saying, we want to we wanna be a part of what you're doing. And all the souls that we're winning, we're gonna, we're, we have a system worked out where we're going to um, be connecting them into these local churches. But my purpose of coming on here today is, is to encourage you to sign up and be a part of what we're doing. Even if say you say, Brother Charlie, I can only come for two days. Just come for two days then. Just come for two days and help us win souls on the streets. I want to be able to, could you imagine if by the end of the week we saw 10,000 people saved in the city of Chicago? Not just in the crusade. Not just on the three days where we're standing and we're proclaiming in the park. But because we had so many workers, so many people, miracle workers that joined us, that we saw 10,000 born again. What kind, of, what, what kind of numbers can we see? What kind, of, what kind of party is heaven going to throw? if we saw thousands of people born again in, in the city of Chicago. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So all you gotta do is click on the link. David Yancey says 10,000, yes. I'm telling you, 10,000, could you imagine? Souls in a week, seven days. Even if we saw 1,000 saved every single day from Sunday to Sunday, that'd be 7,000 people born again. And again, we're doing everything that we can do that is, that is possible with, with the ministry. We're pressing, we're pressing every dollar, every dime, every penny. We're stretching it, we're pressing it because we wanna make the biggest impact that we can. That's why I thank God for our partners. I thank God for those that are, are partnering with the ministry, not just here in America, but overseas. Do you realize that there are people that are sowing into the crusade that don't even live in America, that are saying, I, I believe in the vision. I believe in Chicago Freedom Fest. I believe in America shall be saved. And I, I live in the Middle East. I live oh, oh, in, in Indonesia. I live uh, you know, in England. And I, I'm sowing because I believe that so, as America goes, so goes the world. And I'm willing to sow into souls. And I'm willing to see the inner city of America. Brother Charlie, I've been seeing what's been happening uh, on the news and, 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 and I saw what was happening in, in the city of Chicago, 85 people dead last week. And I saw that you're going to, to win souls in, in, in the city of Chicago. And I want to be a part of that. I can't come, I can't make it, but I'm going to sow into it. I'm going to give into it. I saw that you're going to be feeding families and you're going to be blessing the community. I want to be a part of that. I want to help. I want to help pay for the sound system. I want to help pay for the, you know, um, the, 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 the televisions. I want I want, to, I want to commit to pay for 10 TV sets so that you would be able to draw bigger crowds. Brother Charlie, I want to, pray, I want to pay uh, for 25 families to be fed for the week. I, I, I want to uh, be a part of that. Joe, the link is in the description box. There's two links. There's one link in the description box to sign up to be a volunteer. You just sign it up. You sign up. Fill it out as best you can. You say, I, Brother Charlie, I don't even know what area I want to want to be a part of. It doesn't matter. Just sign up, and we'll, when we get you there, and you're there on the grounds, boots on the ground, then you will definitely be able to be a part of something. We'll plug you in somewhere. And then secondly, there's a link in the description box as well to sow a seed if you want to give. If you want to give. 
If you say, Brother Charlie, I want to give $1,000. I want to give, you know, I want to give $100. Brother Charlie, I want to be a partner of the ministry. Uh, I want to become a partner of Destiny Encounters because I believe in soul winning. I believe in evangelism. I believe in what you're doing. I know that you're a prophet. See, listen, God right now is doing this. He is coupling the evangelistic anointing with the prophetic anointing. He is coupling them together. It is the anointing, the same anointing like I said at the beginning of this. This anointing is the same as the anointing of the spirit of Elijah. Because Elijah called a nation back to God. And he also operated in signs, wonders, and miracles. And so this is not, it's, it, it, this is not, you know, that powerless, unanointed message of the gospel where we just give a message and then, you know, there's no demonstration. That is not what we're doing. We are preaching the gospel because Paul said, I did not come with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration and power of, of the gospel so that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of men, but it would rest in the power or the faith of God. So it's the evangelistic anointing of the saving of souls to turn a nation back and, and, and to preach with miracles, signs, and wonders. Can I press you guys a little bit further? Are you okay? I know I've been on here a while, but I'm trying to stir you up. And I'm gonna push a couple buttons right now on religious people. If you're all right, just type in, Brother Charlie, I'm fine. Or amen, or give me something, give me a thumbs up, give me a tap on the screen, give me some hearts. Because I'm going to push a couple religious buttons right now. I'm going to push some buttons. Esther says she's all right. Neely says, Neely, it's good to see you on here. Alyssa says it's all right. Luke says it's divine and fine. <laughs> Put... Push it, but I'm, I'm pushing all the buttons right now. Dave Yancey says, push the buttons. Okay, so I'm gonna push a couple buttons here. Listen, we got videos of a guy walking in sackcloth and ash down the center of major cities in the United States of America that have thousands and thousands of views on them and the streets are empty as he's walking. He's not even preaching to anybody. Nobody's even listening to him. But people think that that's so amazing and grand. Some people are like, oh, that's, that's what we need to do right now. Put a sack, a sackcloth and ash on and walk down the street of these cities and tell people to repent. And I'm like, there's not, he's, nobody's even listening to the guy. And really... The honest, the, the, uh, let me just be very honest with you. Let's just, and I don't know, I, you know, God bless the guy, whatever, you know, bless him. But I'm just going to be honest. If you wanted to do that, then why are you, why are you putting it online? Why, why even put it online? Why, why, why put it on YouTube? What's the point? You're not even, there's nobody even listening to you. And, and, and the Bible says that the goodness of God leads a man to repentance. So what exactly is walking in, 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 a, in a sackcloth and screaming at the top of your lungs for people to repent and telling them how bad they are going to do anything? They're not even listening to you. But yet, we'll, we'll look at that and we'll sit there and we'll say, oh, that's a thousand, 100,000 hits, million hits on it. And we'll say, this is, this, is, this is, you know, this is it right here. And it's like, is that it? Is that what, is that what this is? No. How about, listen, first of all, 
You're, you're not even in, you're, you're, you're downtown New York. My friend, go, to the inner, go down to the inner city. Go down to Brooklyn in the middle of some of those areas and walk around in sackcloth and ash. We'll never see you again. Stop with, the, stop with the foolishness, okay? I told you I was gonna push some buttons because the, because the goodness of God leads a man to repentance. And it's when we release compassion and love that we see the harvest of souls come in. And so when I'm talking to you about winning souls, I'm not talking about that we're going to have a thousand people wearing sackcloth and ash and we're going to walk down the center of the street of the city and we're going we're gonna to cry out for people to repent. No, how about we go and share the power, the love, and the glory of God with people? How about we go and we give? I told you I was going to push some buttons. Because, because you're walking down the center of the street, screaming at the top of your lungs, telling people, and they're not even there, bro. They're not there. They're locked in their houses because it was the, during the coronavirus. So now that this thing is being broken, it's time to win souls. It's time to get out of the streets. It, I, it's time to go and win the loss at any cost. I mean, it would have been awesome if I would have seen the guy pray for somebody. I didn't see him praying for anybody. I just saw him walking down the center of the road with a sackcloth and ash on and screaming at the top of his lungs. And nobody even listening because most of them were locked in their houses in Corona. I know that I know that triggered some 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 people, and it, and it, and it has thousands of views. And I wish that I could get a thousand people to join me in in Chicago in September. I wish I had a thousand of those thousand. There might be a million views on the video. I wish I had. 500 of those people that watched that video come down to the inner city of Chicago with me, boots on the ground, witnessing and praying and weeping over people that are broken. I wish I had some, some diamonds, some, some, some people that have been refined by the fire of God that are gonna spearhead this thing with me, that are going to say, Charlie, I have, I, I have compassion for those that are lost and dying. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join you. I'm going to join you. I'm going to give a, I, I mean, imagine we could give, we, we could give all kinds of things. Bicycles, iPads, televisions, vehicles, motorbikes. Food, I already told you, we're, pre we're, we're set for 500 families. I, I, wish, I, I wish that we could, we could extend the budget and, and feed more. But, I, but, but at the point where our ministry is at, we're on the brink right now. And I said, you know what? We can press for 500. I can do that. With all, with all the non-traveling and, 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 and you know, months of, of not being able to go anywhere, and, and talk to people face to face about raising finances. I, I, I just, we're going for it. Shauna says, me, 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 me. Listen, what I want you to do, I want you to share the, the, uh, the banner, Chicago Freedom Fest. Share the links. Please, please, please do that. 151 of you on here. Uh, I know 
this is a different kind of broadcast, but I did this on purpose because I wanted to see some of your comments. I wanted to talk directly with you because we need an army that will come with us. And I know I keep saying it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again on this broadcast, but people are jumping on and they're jumping off. And I just want to get the word out for the burning ones to come. Alyssa, thank you for sharing. Nancy, thank you for sharing. Listen, the love of God draws a man to repentance. Conviction, conviction does come when the gospel is preached accurately. And that's what we plan to do. And there's, there's guys that are on the ground already ready in Chicago. They're ready for us. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. I believe it, Maria. I believe it. I believe that the Lord will even multiply the food. I believe that the Lord will multiply the giveaways. I believe that the, the, everything will multiply. Let's believe. Let's believe. Let's believe for the finances. Let's believe for everything multiplication. Let's believe that there'll be a car. Somebody will, will have a car that they'll want to give away. Let's believe. Let's believe for all these things. Bless you, Nancy. Okay, so listen, you guys. There's two, again, there's two links. And I'm going to, over the next several months, I'm going to be coming on and I'm going to be just going no holds barred with you and, and uh, getting you to join me in the, in the city of Chicago in September. But there are two links, two links in the description box of this video. Firstly, there is a link for you to sign up as a volunteer. As a volunteer to sign up and be a part of what we're doing. You say, I'm gonna be there September the 6th through September the 13th, Charlie, you can count on me. Sign up. You say, well, Brother Charlie, I don't know where I, what area I want to sign up for. I don't know, you know, where I, I want to plug in yet. And when I go to fill it out, it says, you know, choose something to, to, to um, an area to be, be a part of. Listen, thank you, Colleen. Bless you so much for sowing into the crusade. Thank you so much for partnering with the ministry. Um, so you, you don't worry about what area. I know that there's, if you know what area you want to volunteer in, then awesome. But if you don't know, don't worry about it. When you get there, we'll figure that all out. We'll plug you in to something that you will enjoy being a part of. Maybe you say, Brother Charlie, I'm just an intercessor. What do you mean you're just an intercessor? Come and intercede. Come and be a part of that. Walk the streets, intercede. You know, uh, 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 Daniel Nash would go weeks ahead of Finney into the cities and begin to pray. He would begin to pray. And, and, and during Finney's crusades, Daniel Nash would be underneath the, cruise, the, the um, stage praying and interceding for the souls. Man, I wish I had a 50 to 100 intercessors that would come, that would just be underneath the, 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 the stage and just, just praying for souls to come in. Just what about that walk in the streets like two weeks ahead? They, they said, Brother Charlie, I'm not going to go on September the 6th. I'm going to go early, uh, you know, mid-August, and I'm just going to walk the streets of where the crusade is going to be going and praying. Hallelujah. Preparing the ground, that's right. That's right, Sharon, preparing the ground. And you say, Brother Charlie, I'm an intercessor. Well, intercede. Come and intercede on the grounds. Be a part of this. Help us spearhead this. 
awakening in America. So there's a link there. Esther, come and be an intercessor. Yes. Luke, thank you. Strike the ground. Hey, Donna, bless you. Donna, come and be a part of what we're doing. So there's a link. Volunteer. Volunteer. That's right. House Church, let's do this. That's amen, amen. So there's a link for number one, volunteers. Number two, number two, there's a link where you can sow for souls. And we are currently raising the finances for this crusade. Every dollar counts. Every, every dollar counts. Every dollar counts. Every dollar counts. Every dollar counts. Debbie says, how do I get the fire back? Join us in September. I promise you, you will leave set on fire. Every dollar counts. Thank you, Kathy. Donna, he'll do it. Thank you, Gwyneth. Thank you for partnering with the ministry. We thank God for all of our partners. And I've been really enjoying the Zooms that we've been doing every week. It's been a good way to connect with all of our partners and, and do some training and equipping. And I've been very, I've been really focusing on Miracle Signs and Wonders ministry. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for sowing. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for, being a, for sharing the broadcast. Amen, 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 amen. I'm gonna wait just a few more minutes. I'm gonna read some more comments and I'm gonna pray for you. Yeah, they've been really good. Amen. So one of the ways, again, volunteer or secondly, thank you, MJ, bless you, is sowing. Sowing into souls. Sowing into the harvest. Sowing. Becoming a partner of Destiny Encounters. And we thank God for our partners. Our partners are the ones that are helping to spearhead many, many of the crusades, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it costs to do these crusades. Without the partners, there's no way we could do them. I mean, because you have to realize that it isn't just even, even the crusade that week that you know we're, we have to have funds for, but we're sending, we're sending a Darcy in uh, you know, these different places during these different times and, and the finances for that, you know, all, all of this, you guys, without, without partners, we couldn't do it. We could not do it without our partners. And so we thank God for all of our partners. We're always praying for our partners. And we're believing God that, that even the partner base will grow because we want to do more and more and more and more. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much for sewing. Yeah, Darcy's amazing.
Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. How do I become a partner? Susan, there is a link in the description box. It'll give you the option when you go to the, to the website, whether you want to become, uh, you want to sell one-time gift or you want to become a partner of the ministry. And if you have any trouble with doing that, just info at destinyencounters.com and Christine um, will contact you personally. She will help you. We want to make sure if you want to become a partner that we make it uh, it possible for you to partner with the ministry. And we thank God for that. We thank God for that. So I'm just going to wait a few more minutes here. But I, guys, I just I felt strongly to just, and I'm going to be doing these more and more. A a, a lot of my teaching and. Um, and, um, you know, the in-depth teachings, I do those on our partner page. That's where I do I, in our Zooms that we do. We just did one last night. I, I, I believe the, the Zoom went from 8 o'clock until 11 o'clock. It's like an hour and a half teaching, which, guys, the teaching is on the partner page. The uh, rebroadcast is on the partner page in case you want to watch it. Then we took questions and answers and all these different things. And I've really been reserving a lot of the meaty content, the stuff that um, is more in depth to, to that partner page because we want to be able to give back to our partners in, 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 a, um, in a particular way. Michelle said the Zoom calls are fire. Yeah, I've been really enjoying them because we can see each other face to face and we can chat that way. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to come on and do. Uh, I'll do some teachings on, on on this normal on the platforms that we have, but some of the meteor stuff and the really in depth teachings that I do. Uh, I, I I reserve those for our partners because they're sowing every single month. Bless you, Alyssa. Okay, so let me pray for you. I want to pray for all of you today. And if you feel led to sow, you feel led to give, you feel led to become a partner, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And also, if you want to, again, you want to volunteer, we want to see you there. I'm hoping that the numbers of volunteers are going to skyrocket after this. A particular broadcast. But Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for all of those that are called, that are chosen by you, that are burning ones. Lord, they're, they're diamonds that will spearhead the move of God in this coming hour. Lord, I pray for all of those that are underneath the sound of my voice, that your anointing would begin to flow upon them, that a fresh fire for winning the lost would come upon them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I bless them. Lord, I ask you that your anointing would go through this broadcast and touch them now in the name of Jesus. Let a tangible touch of your presence fill them now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Oh, ma rebetishta kalabasondo rustale hela macumbra masale vestula bratushta lebekite la stondo let the fire touch them now. Oh, God, secando le mestianda le brufresti kiti ato rustatia. I bind every attack of the enemy that has been trying to perpetrate upon the people of God and I release the presence of Jesus from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, I pray for a fresh anointing to fall upon them now. Lord, I ask you to anoint their eyes with the fire of God. Anoint their ears with the fire of God. Anoint their hands with the 
anointing and the fire of God. Lord, release a fresh impartation to hear, to see. Lord, to speak. Set their mouths on fire so that people will watch them burn. Lord, I pray. I pray, let the fire of God touch them right now. Let the anointing set them on fire. Right now, I bind lukewarmness. I bind every spirit of, uh, 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 of lukewarmness in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, release compassion. Holy Ghost. Release compassion, Lord, for the lost, for the dying, for the sick. Release compassion, God. The fire of compassion come upon these people in Jesus' name. Let the anointing begin to flow, God. Let them be changed, transformed, metamorphosized, through the new creation. Lord, I ask you that the anointing would begin to flow right now. That the anointing would begin to flow. Lord, on every believer underneath the sound of my voice. Ah, God, give us an army, Lord. Rapo piasta kanta la masiata. Oh, me levele mene ni astu rebe ki alaba toro sultanawa. Lord, release it now in Jesus' name. Let that anointing flow, Holy Ghost. Touch every soul. Touch the heart with fire. Touch the hearts of all those that are underneath the sound of my voice with fire. Set them ablaze for you. Let them burn, God. Let them burn, Holy Spirit. 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 Let them burn for souls. Let them burn for the lost. Let them burn for you, Lord. Put a coal of fire in their mouth. Put a fire and a flame upon their heart. Lord, I ask you that there would be an altar that you can visit. Let there be an altar that you can touch with fire. Holy Ghost. Just receive now in Jesus' name. Just receive right now in Jesus' name. I pray today for every person underneath the sound of my voice that is watching this. 
that you would be awakened in the night with intercession. That you would be awakened to pray for souls, for the fire to come. Holy Ghost, let the fire of God touch you right now. That you would be moved by the presence of God to pray, intercede. Wake us, awaken us, Lord, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let there be an impartation, Holy Spirit, right now for intercession, for divine communication. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. I pray that the Lord would get a hold of you, that you would burn for him. He would burn for him. Listen, blessings to all of you that joined today on this broadcast. I pray that you join us in the month of September. You would come and be a part of what we're doing. That you would help us win souls. America will be saved. And he is going to save this nation through his church. He is going to save this country through you and I going into the highways and the byways and compelling them to be born again. Bless you. We will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.